Hi, today I'm just going to do a quick video to show you something useful in Python and that is to create an interactive times table. Uh, so someone can put in the number 3 and it, it produces the times table from 0 times 3 through to 12 times 3 as an example. So I'm going to use Python for this because it's, it's actually very easy. Now Python can be tricky to use. You have to open up terminal on a Mac and you've got to put in you know, Python Python 3 and then you've got to change your directories uh, to find your file. That's all very hard. So uh, what I'm going to do today is just use an online Python compiler and it's called REPL it. Now that's hard to remember so if you just go to Google and put in online Python it will come up here. Now from this point you'll click a new one and you've just got to search for uh, the language that you want because this, um, this does a lot of programming languages. And this is it here. So we can just test this. If we just want to go print a string of text called test, we can run it and we get our output over there. So we've got it working straight off without any changing directories or any of that hard stuff. Okay, so let's think about what we want to do here is we want to get user input, a number between 0 and 12, and that user input is multiplied by constant numbers from 0 through to 12. So to build it, the first thing I'm going to do is just do a for loop to create the 0 to 12. Uh, so the code is for variable called i in the range from 0 to 13. Now the thing with Python is you need the uh, the colons here and when you enter it has to be ind indented for it to know that you're working within this space. So if we now print the value of this variable i, now that could be anything, you could put anything there, but I'll just put that for now. So that's the first part of what we want to build is all of these. So if we want to just put in uh, the letter X as a string, so if we do it with quotes, string and separate it with a comma, you can start to see how this will build. So after that variable, let's put in a string of the equal sign. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So what we need to do is before the X, we need to put in the user's input. So if we call it, this is a variable called number, and it's assigned a value of input, and the question or the statement might be, enter a number between 0 and 12. Hopefully that's explicit enough. Some people <laughs> might want to um, say that can only be 1 to 11. Whatever. You can customise that to how you feel. Alright, so now what will happen is when we run it, it will run this block of code first, which will be this question or this statement and whatever I type in is going to get stored into this variable and then we can put that variable down here but there's just a couple of little gotchas first but let's run it and see where we're up to so enter number so I could say 4 so it's done it behind the scenes but we haven't explicitly told it to put here so if I say okay let's put number here the value of number so we can run this again, if I put 6, okay, our, our program is starting to build. All we need here is to go number times the, the input number times this variable will give us the answer. Uh, but there's one trick, and I'm going to show you uh, the problem, is that 
Uh, we have to convert it to an integer number first, but I'll show you what happens if we don't do that. So if we just say the last part of our program is simply to say user input times the variable called i. Now we're going to get an unexpected result here. So if I put in 8. So what's happened is that it doesn't understand that you're putting in a number. It, it, so what we have to do is just explicitly say the user input is an integer. And so we do that with this code that is int, open bracket, close bracket. We've run it now. 12. And just like that, we have a program that gets user input and gives a useful output and it shows loops. And whilst this is a very simple program, you can see the foundations of what you could do with big data. Um, if you wanted to take this further, you could try building this in other programs like JavaScript or even Scratch. In fact, let's do that. Let's try it in Scratch. In this case, I find it's actually harder to do this in Scratch than in Python. And you'll find this as you progress, that uh, Scratch is easy to start with, but as, as you expand and develop, you'll actually find it's easier to do it in the, the text-based languages, which is really why we push uh, people to do that. But we could still do a version. So if we think about this, we want to create a loop to start with, it's just going to go from 0 to 12. So we could the output could be a say block. So we have a variable, we called it i. We set the variable i to 0. And then we want to change that variable by 1. And we want to do that 12, no, 12 times. Try 12, it might be 13. And then we can say i. And we'll just give ourselves an event handler. That's going to take a while because of the two seconds. So let's make it 0.5 seconds. So he's iterating through the numbers. Okay, so we'll make that 13. And you can see up here the value of the value of i is changing on each loop. So it starts at zero. It gets said at zero, then it changes by one. It's still within this loop. And when it gets to 13, then it breaks out of this loop and goes down. So that's a little bit different to what we were doing in the Python. So a list is going to be a better way. So if we have a list called times table, and so we can add something to this list. So we could add i to the times table. So instead of saying it, or well, we could say it and we can watch what happens. So he's saying it 12 times, so we've got that in the wrong spot there. So if we do it that way. Okay, and the mistake I made here is that we need to clear off anything first. So if we delete all of the times table to start the program, then we set the variable to zero, and then we'll say what the variable is, add it to the table, then change it by one. It'll go to one, it gets added to the table all the way up until we get to 13. So let's just test that this is working how we'd hope. Okay, so then if we think about what we did in Python, we got this part working and then we wanted it to say, 
um, times the number. And we want that to be in here. So what we could do is we could join a string of text called X. If we just go X and maybe a space. So let's see how this looks. Okay, so that's starting to build. And we also don't need this say block anymore because that was just for testing. All right, and we might even speed up. Oh, that should, that should be good now. Okay, so then we wanted to get user input. So in Scratch, we do that with the ask block. Enter a number between zero and 12. And it's got this built-in variable called answer. So that's fine, we can use that. So we've got to concatenate this output a little bit more with another join block. So join answer to times of the variable that is getting looped. Seven. So that's working and we can just put, we may need to put a space. Uh, can, let's try that. Okay, that's working well. Now we need to put an equals. So we need to do another join. Put all this in the front one. Space equals space. Test that. Okay, the last thing we need to do is multiply the user input by the variable that gets looped. So we've got a multiplication here. So we can get answer times the variable called i and we just have to concatenate those two together. That one, that one. Okay, and there we have it. So there's a useful program that uh, solves a, a problem, I guess, of you used to have to write this out. Uh, this is a way that they can put in any, any number and the output is correct to, based on the, on the input. So there's plenty of places you can go to uh, with this from here, but uh, hopefully this is enough to uh, give you something to work with. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.